are going to focus on uh, um, reading and study skills and, and this part is very important as I've said um, uh, for, your, for your career because you will be exposed to many uh, skills that will enable you to um, cope in other causes. You will get skills on how you you can study, or how you can do your summary, or how you listen to your, your lectures, um, and, and how you can take note of, of the lectures, and the, the necessary skills and strategies that you need uh, for reading, uh, when, you do, when, when do, uh, do you read for lectures, when, you, you know, when do you read for, for, for exam, when do you read for For enjoyment and, and, and so forth. So these are the objectives that will be covered in this course. Uh, and um, at the end of the day, you should be able to get a, a better understanding of the key concepts, concepts of reading skills, listening, speaking, and write, writing skills, which are the four main skills in, in communication. And also, you should be able to make a clear relationship between the four uh, main skills that is reading, listening, and the other skills. But also, you should also be able to describe the strategies um, that uh, that we need to adopt to read different kind of texts. You will notice that. Any kind of text has its own way, or it needs, it requires a particular strategy to to be used for reading. And also, he will have to establish the relationship between reading and listening uh, strategies. Okay. Now, what is the meaning and nature of reading? What is a reading? It is the process that involves recognizing the symbols that make up the language. So you will encounter that uh, reading exposes you into these um, uh, systemic symbols of any kind of language that you must that, that you must be able to recognize and be able to read uh, uh, with um, understanding those particular symbols and of course when they are accumulated together they create a, a larger text and you will find that towards, towards the end of this course we are going to be exposed into uh, into a little bit of grammar and we are going to learn on how we move uh, from having the smallest unit to the largest unity of uh, sentence, uh, sentence construction you will be able to understand on how different um, uh, 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 phonetic symbols are put together to create morphemes and then from there when the morphemes are put together to create a word and then from word to groups of words and then to clauses and to, to a larger text which is the, 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 the sentence. Now with reading you need a larger text to read through that you can be able to get the meaning that is uh, constructed within a particular uh, text. But then uh, your reading depends on the relationship between the author, author's purpose of writing the text and the reader's uh, purpose of reading the text. So you will note that reading of any kind of text uh, depends very much on your personal um, um, your personal interest on that particular text, and also it depends on the person who constructed or created or wrote that particular text. So it's very, very important for academic text. You will help you to know that when you need to read or to prepare yourself for exam, and then you will help to you will be able 
to, to, to make some time to read books for leisure, for your own interest, and for you to be able to understand uh, when you're reading this particular kind of text, even newspaper, you need to have a good background of the, of the authors, the context, the timing when writing that particular text, so that you are able to grasp the content of that particular text. And so the issues that are involved in reading that has psychological, social, cultural, and a linguistic background, as I say, that these things of, of, of writing text has to do with the person's identity. And so you've got to establish, a, um, if you are reading a storybook, then you've got to establish a little bit of a history of the writer. If you want to read it an academic text, then you've got to understand the person who wrote the text was writing that text for what purpose, and also was writing from what background, from which country, and what was the timing when writing that particular text, because they all have influence on uh, understanding that particular text when you are reading it. So it, it will also help you. And for example, if you do not read, if you do not have a cut of reading, for example, a newspaper, it might be difficult for you to just take a newspaper and start reading because you will be questioning everything that you find in the newspaper. But if you got the cut of reading a newspaper, then you will be able to follow the story. For example, if you are reading political newspaper, then you will be you should be able actually to know the trend of political. Um, situation of the country it is difficult for you if you really don't follow you don't watch news you don't listen to news you don't interact you don't engage into people in people in people um, gathering it is hard for you really to follow the political uh, grounds of the of the current political grounds of the country or the development political development of the country if you really not interested in such issues so you you really with reading for you to really to understand a particular text, the background of the writer, of the author, is really very important and that creates a very, very good relationship between you as the reader and, 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 the, and the writer. And remember that with, um, when you begin this um, uh, program, this course, we say that communication must involve people, participants. And remember this, this is the communication that involves, that, that it has to do with the print and that you need, uh, that your communication will engage you as an individual and you will be interacting with the print that is not talking but you will have to make some initiative and efforts to really understand the person who created and composed that particular thing. So it really involves dynamic interaction, as I already said, and that changes depending on both the internal and external factors of the of the reader. So if you would be the person to make sure you initiate that the communication between you and the author, the author is talking to you through that particular text that you are reading, and I should be able to make a sense of that particular text by the uh, different efforts to ensure that you, you get a clear, um, a clear uh, background from the, the author or the writer of that particular text. Like I said, we're going to uh, expose ourselves into the different types of, sometimes I call them the strategies, reading strategies that we use to read different kinds of texts. And in this, actually, we will not necessarily to stick with this point because it depends or, or, or from one person to another, the interest of the person and the type of the text that the person is reading for them and the purpose of reading that particular text. So we've got scanning. Scanning, it's a way of reading by looking at specific information in the text. When you scan read, you see every item on the page, but you don't necessarily read the whole entire page. So you scan, you look at the authors, you the organizers, organizers such as, you look at the numbers, the letters, you look at the word, the organization of the texts, the use of words such as first, second, you know, what you are trying to establish from the particular text when you're using scanning is to look at the key words but also the key points. You look at the words that are bold, italics, okay, the font size, the color, the style, you know, all those uh, tips gives you an indication of, of the quick meaning that you want to grasp.
from that particular from that particular scanning contains it looks similar to skim reading but they are quite different skim reading is when you browse or browse randomly through a book so you can take your book and begin to run through your book from the beginning towards the end but there must be some kind of specific thing that you are taking the purpose of skimming is to get an overview you're getting an overview of the skim overview what is the main idea of the author of this particular book so if you, you are you are in you visited the library and you want to borrow the book you can't just go in the shelf and just take the book or go and borrow the book that won't work you need to have something in particular that you want to look for and so you visit the library and you go straight into that particular book that you searched and you found that it is there in the library and then you will take the book because the book might have a very interesting title but what is inside might be somehow irrelevant to what you are interested in so what you will do you will do the skimming looking for overview because you might not have the time to sit there in the library physically to read because you have to take it with you at home so you get an overview of of that particular book now what do you do so you use you uh, i mean you uh use you, you you decide if the book or the article is worth reading or not you should just leave it in the shelf so you often skim read when you have lots of material to read in a limited amount of time so for example you are preparing yourself for an exam you won't be able maybe to add all the spent all of the you are you are you are your entire day in the library but you want to check that book with you and use it later so what you will do basically you have to do the skim reading so that you later or you can uh, you can uh, do some other kind of reading like in-depth reading or intensive reading but also this skim reading because it helps you to get an overview it can help you when you are preparing yourself for exam you will find yourself that you will need to at least do the, the general reading getting an overview read the first and the last paragraph using the heading summaries and other organizers you know as you move along and screening across your book you'll find that you get the key you get the, the, the summaries you get the, the words that are interesting so that you get you, you get that a particular overview that will help you to move on when you're preparing for your exam because mind you that you will have a lot a lot of material to go to, to cover uh, when you're preparing yourself for a exam and so you have to to, to, to establish which kind of style, which particular study will I you will, will, will it be suitable for me and it will help me to be able to cope at, during exam 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 uh, session. So you can differentiate between skim reading and, and, and scanning by just um, saying that skimming sometimes it's much fast the fast reading than scanning. Scanning, you're looking for specific information, very specific information. You just browse through the book, but you get into a specific something that you very specific that you are looking for. But with uh, skimming, you might be reading everything on the page, but you are trying to get an overview of the main content of the particular text. Now we go to specific reading. This specific reading is different from the, 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 the scanning and skimming. It is the process that one uh, search and, uh, for information and do some kind of discovery. It requires you to skim read, you need to locate, to mark, then to return to close reading. That is specifically reading when you've got your, you, you've got your, your book, you've got your article, or you've got your laptop, you will have to establish to use the colors, to use different different indica uh, indicators that will help you that when you want to come back to reuse that particular text, then it will be easier for you to find that particular text and, and read it very much. Easier. This type of reading is very useful when you're looking for specific information which may be contained in a variety of books 
in journal articles. So it's very, very, very much useful and you will help to uh, try and, and make use of it. It will help you in your career. And so we've got the in-depth, uh, or, or, or we call it the intensive reading. So when it comes to exam, when we use in-depth reading, then you should know it's the same as intensive reading. Don't get confused, so you need to be able to distinguish and assimilate these technologies. So in-depth reading involves reading a text thoroughly in order to comprehend the ideas and arguments it contains. And so it's a thorough reading. So there will be time that you will need really to get a thorough reading in your in your various courses that you won't need to to rush, but you will have to get into detail so that you get the intended uh, intended meaning. In depth reading is consequently much slower than skim reading, of course, because you are reading in detail in depth, then you will have to a little bit be slowly because you want to grasp really the essence of, of the author of that particular text. And if you are preparing for your exam in, 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 in the other courses, then you will have also to apply some time in the reading so that you are really able to understand what your lecturer is trying to um, address in particular uh, issue of your course. You may find that you need to read certain sections of difficult uh, of difficult text more than once, so it's, it, it's very normal when you you, you, you engage yourself in, in yourself with in-depth reading to read as many times as you can, just a paragraph or just a page or just two pages repeating the same thing, uh, because it is much slower and the idea behind of using in-depth reading is to get a better understanding of difficult areas. So you will have to use this particular strategy across your courses. It depends on uh, timing for your preparation, preparation for your exam. So you can go back to the beginning and read through the whole text, marking and noting down issues that you think are very, very uh, running in that particular uh, text that you are reading. So you will also identify keywords, you will identify phrases and ideas and, and, and facts that are, are coming out from, from that particular from that particular text. And so coming to end of, of, of reading types the reading strategies and types, it is the critical reading. As I have said that we can have variety of types of strategies of reading, but these are the main ones that are important actually for us as, as, as university students that we need to know. Critical reading, it is a further dimension of in-depth reading. So it's beyond in-depth reading. You're reading in-depth in, in or you're reading intensively, but critically. Okay? Reading a text critically means that you do not accept everything that you see in that particular text. Rather, you critically try to assess and evaluate the text or the content that is brought in in the particular, in the particular text. So it's, 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 it's not about, I accept everything that the author wrote, but, you know, I think the text would read better if it was it could be written in this particular way. Or, this is very interesting. Text, but what I think, what is missing in this text is one, two, three, four. That is critical to read when you read with a clear understanding and open-minded and actually understand exactly what is it is your, your viewpoint regarding a particular point or a particular theory. Uh, and, 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 and what is your contribution to what is uh, existing or to what is exposed in, in, to you through the particular text. Reading critical does not mean you find faulty in a text, but rather you should question and judge the merits and worth and worthy of the information it contains. So it's not about criticizing everything that you encounter in the text, but rather you question and judge the worthiness of the information that you So there are a number of iterated processes involved in reading critical, uh, in, in doing critical reading. We, we need to 
to interpret the information, to analyze, to synthesize, and to evaluate. So these things, uh, these are, are the, stage, uh, the, 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 the stages that are involved when doing critical uh, reading. There is, there, it's very important that you do the interpretation. How uh, is this information? Do the interpretation of this information that you are exposed to. Then you do the analysis and you synthesize the information and then evaluate, you know, give the, you give the merit to the text and then uh, you can be able to uh, you can be able to move on and accept uh, the information. Now from the reading strategies, from the reading strategy or the reading skills, we move on to the listening skills. Remember this part, we are focusing mainly into the main four language skills and we see, we, we, we're trying to see on how can we use those skills to communicate across languages and across different cultural uh, backgrounds. So listening skill, we spend about 9% writing, 16% reading, 30% speaking, and 45% listening. Wow! And so we listen a lot than, than whatever we do. We listen a lot. So listening, you can imagine how much do we listen per day. It's a lot. It is a process that involves active decoding and interpretation of verbal messages. So listening, of course, it involves listening from the verbal messages. Listening strategies, then for us to be able to listen and with understanding, there should be strategies that we should employ for us to be able to listen about a particular message and be able to understand. Otherwise, we'll be listening as if we can, as if we're hearing some noise outside, we're hearing some noise of some internal disruption in our mind and so forth. So there should be strategies that will help us to be able to understand and recall of the listening inputs that we are exposing. So the strategies are the background knowledge and the knowledge of the text. So remember, text can be spoken or written. Don't be confused here because I know the following lecture will be about uh, 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 discourse analysis, discourse, and so you'll be able to understand this particular aspect of text. When I, I, I speak about text, I refer to I refer to spoken and written words. And so when we speak about the strategies that the techniques that are used to uh, help us comprehend the 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 the, the, the listening input. The background knowledge that any kind of activity that you want to listen, then you should be able, you should, you should be in position to understand the background knowledge of that particular event. And then you will be asking myself, yourself, what's happening? For example, at night in your house, then you hear some noise at night, then you hear some noise from the neighbor or across the road in the street. What happened in your mind? What happened in your mind? When you try to establish what is happening, what's, what, where is that noise coming from? Then you wake up your wife and your children and then you tell them, please, what's happening? I can hear some noise to the neighbor or to the, in the street. What is happening? When you are trying to understand what is happening next door or in the street, that's what you are trying to listen. You are trying to establish what is it is happening. Okay? Because you heard and then you are trying to understand what is that noise for? What is happening? You are trying to listen. Because listening then will help you to understand what was all about that noise. And then the knowledge of the text. And this is very important, the knowledge of the text. You should be able to understand if you are listening to someone who is speaking orally, then you should be able to know the background. You can not just get into, into a value where you don't know what's the background, what, 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 what is all about. 
and you find some people talking about issues that you don't even understand, you will find yourself as lost and, you know, and even interfering in some other people's talk that is not necessary to you. So that's why it's important to have the knowledge of the text. And as far as reading is concerned, also, it is also important that you know the knowledge of the text. It, the same applies to uh, listening skills, that it is important that you know the knowledge of, of the text that you are able to listen. Now, we've got types of listening. And sometimes I might ask the questioning for you in the exam to give the differences between attentive listening, okay, attentive listening and critical listening. Because we've got only two types of listening, attentive listening and critical listening. But then sometimes I can decide to establish if you really understand well on the skills that optimize attentive listening and you started how to establish if my student have really studied critical, not only critical, but in depth. If they apply in depth really, then I will come to want to understand do they know attentive listening? Because I know you might know the definition of attentive listening, but then do you know that there are skills that we use to optimize attentive listening? Then I ask you the question What is attending skills and following skills? And then if you have studied there uh, in, 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 uh, in depth, then you won't be able to respond to this question. So I expect you, I expect you to really be able to know that there are three skills that you can use to optimize your attentive listening skills. And these are attending skills. That is the first one. Attending skills. This has to do have to do with the way the listener position oneself before the speaker. It is very, very important skill because the way you position against against another person, it has it, has, it, it affects the listening. Okay, for example, using posture of involvement, appropriate body motion, keeping eye contact. Remember this. I said communication has to do with culture, context. Uh, they have these are factors that influence in our communication. And so some of the of the of the issues, for example, the post of involvement, appropriate body motion, eye contact, eye, eye contact might be appropriate in one culture and inappropriate in another culture. Acceptable in this culture and not acceptable, not acceptable in another culture. For example, it is appropriate for a white person to speak to you when looking into your eyes that shows that you are keeping for he or she is keeping attention or is listening attentively keeping your eyes keeping eyes uh, looking into your eyes but it might it may it might not be appropriate in our culture i'm referring to african culture talking to your Father-in-law, for example, looking straight into his eyes. If I do that to my, my father-in-law, then it's, it seems that I'm misbehaving. So, as I said, it has to do with the culture, and the culture is influenced, and we cannot distinguish, we cannot put boundaries before between language and culture, and we are part and parcel of our life. But then as far as communication is concerned, as I say, it depends from depend on, uh, on the communicative event. But for you, for, for the person to be able to listen attentively, attending skill is very important. And if the behavior that shows us that there is attending skill, these the three behaviors, the body, I mean the non-verbal behavior that I have mentioned there can indicate to the person that you are really listening attentively or not or you are not interested for example if you are talking to the person and you give the person your best what does that mean it means that you are not interested in actually the person is wasting his or her time or your time so those are the uh, the, 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 the the what the the indicators the indicators of behavior that you can you can clear read from the conversation 
and, and, and be able to understand if the person is following, is listening, or in the lecture you're looking at the student, are they following, or are they sleeping, are they chatting, or are they, they busy with the mood of platform where you're teaching them, they do not listen, and, and, and other things like that. So, and then another skill, and another attentive listening is the following skill. The following skill, these are behavior meant to inform the speaker that you are following the talk, the behavior, how people behave. Then they show it shows that these people, that this person is following or is not following. Can you imagine talking to a person lying on his desk and you keep on talking and you keep on talking? Or if you are preaching, you keep on preaching while you see, you you see that. The members in the church are sleeping and you keep on preaching and preaching and reading verses of Bible and so forth. At the end of the day, nobody is listening, actually is following. But also, we notice that the person is following, is following carefully when, when there is use of inviting comments to the speaker. Okay? When we're interacting with the person and the person will be like, okay, and so what happened? And then when you were reached there, and so who received you? And so you know those we call we call those uh, phrases. Eh? We call those phrases inviting comment. Use of inviting comment is an indicator that the person is listening to you attentively. And so you, as a university student now, and we have exposed you into this particular course, you should be now be observant and look at how people communicate, and you should be interested in, in, in people's talk so that you can see how these skills are applied. Isn't, isn't that is that much more useful? And you will be, you will be actually applying the knowledge of this course. But also there is use of minimal encouragement. Minimal encouragement is when you're talking to someone and the person is just listening and, is, and goes like, Oh, I see. Oh, that's right. Real? That's very, very interesting. Okay? That's very, very wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, is that so? So such kind of phrases, we call those phrases the minimal encouragement. We use those or we try to observe those from the uh, from the communicative event when we're listening to the speaker or the interaction to establish really if the people involved in, the, in that particular communicative event are really following the um, following following the uh, the discussion or the talk or or the lecture. But also there is use of frequent questions, uh, the questions like the open and red one, okay. Like then questions can be asked asked to uh, um, to to your colleague. Uh, is that is, is that what you meant for us? Is that what you um, you did to your mother? To to just indicate to just to uh, to, to show the 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 speaker that you are really following the story. Is that what happened? Okay, what time did you guys go? Um, what was the intention of visiting? So you're trying to question and showing interest depending on the on the that particular talk uh, that you are engaged in at that particular point in time. So the third skill that optimizes your listening skill is uh, attentive listening is the reflecting question questions reflecting questions. These include paraphrasing and questions reflecting feelings or meaning. When the person speaks uh, about something and you're trying to show that you are really interested in the talk and you are really following, then you try to paraphrase that particular uh, particular uh, talk uh, and, and give reflecting questions so that the person who was talking to you or addressing to you, addressing you will be uh, will be able to establish that you are really following the talk or for example it, will, it is the lecture lecture um, session when you're trying to paraphrase what was the uh, lecturer trying to um, discuss with you then that shows or it indicates to the lecturer that you are really uh, following the discussion 
So those are the three uh, skills that optimize attentive listening. And we've got we've got the final we've got the final skill of of, of listening. It is the critical listening. It is meant to understand and remember the purpose of doing critical listening. It, it, is, it is meant to evaluate, assess, interpret what the what you uh, hear. So critical listening emphasizes on a critical thinking. It's more on a critical thinking. I think, and your statement will always be me. I think and I thought uh, that this could be done this way because it's about critical thinking. Uh, critical thinking is related to asking questions. So you will pose as many questions as possible to show that you are really uh, thinking uh, critically. Like in this particular lecture, you will be questioning you, yourself like if you can, you could get Madam directly into Moodle and try to uh, question and pose some questions around uh, types of listening and always you will always with critical listening you will always have some suggestions or you will always have some of your thinking around that particular issue. Listening critically provides the basis for good problem questions. When you probe the question you want to know more, you want to inquire more information about a particular issue that you are not clear of. So it's 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 normal at university you will find that probing for you will be part of life. Asking do not hesitate to ask questions, do not feel shy to ask a question among amongst your group discussion, among um, during the interaction in the Moodle platform, feel free to ask anything because that's what university is all about. We construct critical thinkers that is the people who can look at the issue or at the problem and be able to critically think about it and be able to come up with a solution. Okay, so we use that to become a good platform for you to use uh, your time effectively to uh, think about very uh, critical issues pertaining your program, critical issues pertaining our society, that, that, that is part and parcel of our life. So we need to talk about our issues, we need to talk about our problem, and when we talk about critical, critical listening and critical listening, uh, meaning, uh, meaning, uh, listening critically to people talking about different issues about our life, then we mean that people are trying to think on how and what the best solution to come up with to what's solving our different problems in society. Now let's move to another skill quickly, uh, speaking skill. This is also another skill and it's part and parcel of our life and we do it each and every day and I'm now even doing it. I'm talking, I'm speaking to you and you're actually listening to me. So speaking skill. It is important to recognize that speaking involves three uh, areas of knowledge. Speaking. It involves mechanics, which is pronunciation, grammar and vocabulary, you know. And so those who will, who, who will, who will opt to go for linguistics, then they will be able to go and focus on those issues about pronunciation, they will focus on drama, they will focus on, on vocabulary and then they will be able to actually understand better when we're talking or about what we're talking about when we refer to the mechanic part of, 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 of language. And also with speaking we look at the functions, the transactions, the interaction, social and cultural rules and norms okay and so as i say that any kind of communication is very much influenced by the background of the participants involved in a particular communicative event so it depends on who are you talking to at what time at in which place and so these are very very important factors to take into account when you actually talking to people. For example, you cannot go to the funeral and then you 
find people moaning, sad, and then you come up, you, you come up with something that's quite different, that is not even related to the funeral activity. And then people will be like, is he mad? What is, and the anger of all the people in the funeral will be shifted to you because you did not observe the important factors that influence communicating events. So we've got strategy for developing speaking skills. Speaking skills, we've got strategies for developing uh, speaking skills. We use minimal response, and that's why we say speaking is cheaper because you can talk and give response immediately without using any kind of cost for the person to understand what you meant to uh, uh, about that particular discussion. We recognize the script use, using language to talk about language. This is called meta language. Meta language is about using language to talk about 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 language. Meta language. Meta language. So we use the language to talk about we use the language to talk about it. We use the language. Make the language. We use the language using the language to talk about language. So that's very normal and actually that's what we do in everyday uh, communicative in communicative event and for those who will be interested in linguistics then they will help to learn about language and be able to help some other people to use the language appropriately and and um, and so we move on uh, issues of oral present uh, presentation it's all part of speaking skills that we need this skill that we are able to do some oral presentation and now you are a university student you will be required to do some kind of, of presentation maybe uh, in your uh, discussion groups but also sometimes in some other courses you might be required to do some projects that you will be required to present your, your, your findings on a particular issue that you are engaged in so uh, oral presentation is the process of speaking to a group of people or a person in a structured, deliberated manner with the intention of either informing or influencing or entertaining. So it depends. And we should agree that we all do oral presentation, whether we know, or whether formally or informally. If there is any person that don't, don't do oral presentation, then then we can we can also discuss about that when we are interacting in a Moodle platform. Uh, since I don't see you direct, but what I know is that every person do the oral presentation, whether formally or informal. But now you are a university student, you will help to do the oral presentation that is structured, that is informal, that is organized. That will, they will give you criteria of assessment. What are they interested in your oral? Presentation. So it's always it is important to know the issues that are need to be taken into account when you do your oral presentation. But all when you got a presentation, maybe with the, with, the, with the fellow women in, in, in different women groups, uh, or a, a church leader, or um, you got any kind of social responsibility that you pursue in your community. You do different oral presentation. It's very important that any time that you are called for such kind of presentation, please be prepared and you should know that people have expectation to hear something tangible from that oral presentation. So it's important that preparation of oral presentation is done, but also there is a good presentation which requires a careful planning. And presentation must have Analysis, they should be, you should be able to analyze your audience, but also determining the purpose of doing that particular oral presentation, but also 
select effective information. So these are three key issues that will help you to have a good oral presentation. Make sure you know your audience or are you going to talk to the fellow women, their status, in which class are they from, are they educated, you should know all those issues, their linguistic background, so that you are able to capture what their interest, what is interested of them to hear from you. But also, what is the purpose? Do you just want to stand there and speak on anything that is taking their time? Do they gain anything? So what is your purpose? What is the purpose of that particular presentation? But you also select, um, select, um, effective information, relevant information. You should be able to establish what do they need to know, to hear from you. What is it that they really need to hear from you? Okay? Yeah. So, it's very, very important uh, that in, in oral presentation, the purpose, the main purpose, purposes for oral communication is basically to inform people to give information of what particular problem that you worked on or a particular issue that you, that you followed up and then you want to give feedback, but also to entertain. Maybe people want just to be entertained. They would just want to, to hear some nice words, not, not too much difficult issues about their life and, 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 and challenges that they are facing every day. They might be not interested in that, but also to just entertain them. And the way you talk to them and choice of words can keep people alive and being entertained and they can feel a little bit different. But also to persuade, influence people, your ability to, to, to speak, to talk to people and get people influenced and so for politicians, this is their part that they need to use words and be able to convince people, to persuade people, to influence people so that they can they can join with them in the different uh, affiliation. Okay. But um, uh, also oral presentation to trigger people. What is it that made people so interesting and they kept on listening to you without t uh, without um, leaving the venue before you can finish talking? About whatever you plan to talk about. So it's important that you understand that before you can talk, I need to have these things in mind, and so that you are able to do a very good presentation, whether it's written or it's, it's spoken. But all in all, you need to be organized in such a way that you keep your people interested in listening to you. But also, what are the good qualities of a speaker? You can't just stand in front of people and begin to, to, to speak. It's like when you are in church and then you bring someone who cannot read the property and to come and read the announcement of the church, the church members. You will end up having one church member in, 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 in the podium because everybody will just say, okay, let me just go, maybe I'll come and ask later about the announcement. I don't understand. So you will create some kind of chaos. So there should be good qualities of a speaker and that you need to keep it in your mind. And that you are doing communication skills, you need to learn this and be able also to help some other people who do not understand. Who think that speaking is easier, you can just wake up in the morning and stand and speak in front of people. Instead of preparing yourself and come up with some issues that are important for people to listen. So good qualities here, yeah, they see, they have competence. You know, you need to be competent on whatever you want to talk about so that people can get some issues to note down. If you people are talking and people are not jotting anything down, then you should also realize that there's something wrong. You should be able also to evaluate yourself, communication, and I say it, you can clearly say what people are telling you, though they are not talking. But trustworthiness, you know, you leave your words that when you promise people like politician, when you promise people about doing something, then you should also try and go and do it and uh, ensure your effort on helping and solving some issues that are affecting people. And then they will be able next time to come and listen to you. 
similarities and also attraction dressing personality your appearance they all form part of good qualities or uh, many, uh, many qualities of a, of a good speaker and that makes people being interested in listening to you so that makes the marks the end of the uh, of the of the third part of of your course and the next lecture will focus on uh, will focus on a writing discourse where we will be exposed in different kind of text the text uh, that talk about the language remember the meta language and then you will be able to know how do you use these different kind of text to communicate messages and be able to understand each other thank you